Flexibility is important for high kicks. However, if you want to kick high with speed and power, there's more to it than just stretching. Training specific kicking exercises that will not only improve our flexibility, but also our strength within our kicking muscles and the kicking movement itself is crucial for high kicking. If you practice these five sets of exercises, you will become a martial arts high kicking master. And if that's what you want, grab the high kick blueprint. It's free, just click or tap the screen to get it. The first set of exercises we're gonna do are dynamic stretching specific to kicking. The benefits of dynamic stretching include improved flexibility, enhanced performance, increased range of motion, reduced risk of injury, improved muscle activation, and better blood flow. Static stretching does not transfer to high kicks the same way dynamic stretching does. But don't just try and kick as high as you can and let your technique go out the window. Keep your foot flat on the ground, keep your body upright and keep your knees straight. This will enhance the stretch whilst building balance, stability and control. Next is slow controlled kicking and this is where the pain begins. Slow and controlled roundhouse kicks strengthen the hip flexors and knee extensors, the muscles that contract to kick high. Hip flexors are the muscles that lift the knee up and the knee extensors are the muscles that fire the leg into most high kicks such as a roundhouse kick, half moon kick and toe kick. Slow and controlled side kicks use the glutes to keep the knee as high as possible during the movement. This is the secret to Bruce Lee's world famous side kick. Get the knee high during the movement and you maximize the use of the glutes for a brutally powerful and high side kick. The idea with these slow and controlled kicks is that you can't cheat past your weak ranges. You're forced to strengthen every part of the kick, including the pivot. And just being able to lift your leg up and kick high is not nearly as effective as being able to do it with control, speed, and power. So don't worry if your slow and controlled kicking isn't as high as your pad work. Focus on the technique here. Keep your knee as high as you can. Focus on the way that your foot pivots. Focus on getting your hips into alignment. And at the end of each set, hold for 10 seconds as high as you can. Next is pad work. If you don't have a partner to hold pads for you, set something up like the ropes that I'm using that you can use as a target. Bruce Lee emphasized the use of pad work over bag work because of the accuracy it developed. Set your pads up at a height that you can kick with good technique, but challenge yourself. It took me years of practice to be able to kick head height with speed and power, but I haven't kicked for 16 years before making this video, literally, since I stopped practicing Kung Fu when I was 30. And because I've maintained my strength and flexibility, I can still throw an accurate kick with no practice in the past 16 years. It's important to know that the effort required to maintain 80 to 90% of any physical attribute is about 10% of the effort that you had to put in to develop your skills. So put the work in, master your high kicks and keep them for the rest of your life with minimal effort. There are so many ways to practice high kicks with pad work. I'm demonstrating just a few Kung Fu kicks here. Just don't try to kick so high that you lose your balance and that you can't deliver your kicks with the correct technique and with accuracy. A house built on a poor foundation will blow over in the first strong breeze. Same with a high kick built with poor balance. Next, let's add some scientific flexibility training to our traditional martial arts kicking. What I'm about to teach you, I didn't learn from martial arts. We're going to pair end range contractions with a loaded stretch to hack the nervous system and increase flexibility fast. End range contractions are where you take a joint to full range and then contract the muscle that is shortened at its end range to increase flexibility. So if you wanna increase hamstring flexibility while standing, lift your leg up in front of you like you're kicking someone in the groin. When you can't lift any higher, contract your hip flexors and quadriceps hard. This is an end range contraction. And then you superset with a loaded stretch for the opposing muscle group. So after strengthening the quads and hip flexors, you stretch the hamstrings. Or after strengthening the glutes, you stretch the adductors. I go much deeper into how and why this is so effective in the high kick blueprint. So click or tap the screen there to grab it. Next, we have full body mobility. A general mobility session like our 20 minute mobility routine is very effective at solidifying your flexibility flexibility gains and cooling down. You're basically using foam rolling to flush the metabolic byproducts from your muscles to reduce the delayed onset of muscle soreness, aka DOMS, and increase circulation. And you use full range mobility drills for the whole body to teach the nervous system that this flexibility is safe and usable. If you use an efficient mobility routine daily, you will increase your flexibility and kicking height much quicker. I've linked our 20 minute mobility routine to this video so you can check it out. When you do a kicking workout that uses these five types of exercises, your kicking height will skyrocket. So grab the high kick blueprint to see how you can put it all together. And if you wanna see how I do a middle splits workout to get really nice high side kicks and roundhouses, you can click that video there and I'll see you in that next video.